Toby and Henrietta are enjoying their new job on the island of Sodor, but they do look old-fashioned and need new paint. To be truthful, though, even if they got a new paint job, they still would look like the oldest pair on the island. There's no question about that. Even if Toby got streamlined, I don't think he would look anywhere close to modern. That's just not him. James agreed as well. He thought they were a big eyesore to everyone else and mainly himself. Yeah, that figures. I see the Gordon narcissism wore on to you, James. Now we have to hear how wonderful you look because you're the only red engine on Sodor. <sighs> Proceed with your obligatory gloating already. I am a splendid engine, answered James, ready for anything. Oh, said Toby innocently, that's why you once needed bootlaces to be ready, I suppose. Well, that escalated quickly. And geez, how fast do these stories go around? I mean, Toby just came on board and he already knows about James's shoelace incident? And that was how many episodes back? I can't even give an exposition dump that immediate for someone to be able to fire back an insult like that. What, did Toby come to Tidmouth Sheds one night and Thomas just told him everything that happened since day one? Does everybody gotta have blackmail on everybody else? And with that, James left the station angrier than ever. Should have seen that one coming. This adopted Ajita was not beneficial to him at all. Dirty trucks from dirty sidings. Blech. So the more he thought about things grungier than he, the more aggravated he became. Making this worse was that the set of trucks he had collected were initially cooperative, but then decided it was time to teach him a lesson, since he was treating them poorly. I still don't get it. The trucks are supposed to be inherently troublesome. Why would they be complacent to begin with? That's not their modus operandi. Because of that, now I sympathize with the trucks more than I do James. This needs to change ASAP, yo. Presently, they approach the top of Gordon's Hill. Heavy goods trains halt here to pin down their brakes. James had had an accident with trucks before and should have remembered this. Absolutely, and I am glad to hear that mentioned. That means James is blinded by his own rage, not even taking into account what he's already learned. If this had not been mentioned, then it might have been considered an error in the writing. However, it was perfectly referenced. And before something could be done to prevent the calamity that was about to occur, the trucks had seized the moment they wanted and forced James down the hill. By that time, it was too late and James collided straight into what would be his own karma. Something sticky splashed all over James. He had run into two tar wagons and was black from smoke box to cab. Oh, another on-screen collision. This accident may have not been as catastrophic as Henry's flying kipper, but the fact that tar is now all over the place, that's an even harder mess to clean up. With the news of James's patchy problem, Percy and Toby came out to help. But first, it was Toby's turn to gloat. Not that I really think he needed to, though. He was already even with James earlier in the day after mentioning his bootlace incident. I see where it's coming from, but I don't consider it totally called for either. I think James kind of gets the idea. Whatever is that dirty object? That's James, didn't you know? It's James's shape, said Toby. But James is a splendid red engine and you never see his paint dirty. James pretended he hadn't heard. Toby at least was kind enough to help James home. When they returned, Top Hat was waiting for them. Kind of like James's first accident. Funny how history repeats itself. Seeing the efficient job they had performed, Top Hat promised Toby and Henrietta a new coat of paint. He was also rather surprised at James considering the circumstances. He turned to James. Fancy letting your trucks run away. I am surprised. You're not fit to be seen. You must be cleaned at once. Yeah, and he's lucky Toby didn't tell Top Hat all the insults James spat out, too. This was a rather decent episode this time. Being that there were so many references to prior entries, it shows that the storylines here are trying to maintain continuity between each other. I still don't understand how everyone's past mistakes spread around this fast, specifically for the newbies that come to Sodor. It almost feels like a ritual of sorts, where if you become a member, you have to be briefed and know everyone's past shortcomings so you have the right counterstatement when someone calls you out. It's just weird and crazy. 
But also, for the fact that the audience is reminded of how James forgot his own gaffe, it's very much appreciated to know that tabs are being kept on the story and the characters. Kind of like how I am, or anyone else is doing this. As for James being arrogant about his looks, he should have known better than to put Toby down. James has seen this himself, where Gordon likes to be on his high horse and right after he gets shot down. The same thing happens here. The squeaky wheel gets greased, as some would say. I think it's best never to adopt this Gordonism, as I will now call it. It's dangerous because whatever you end up saying might be your famous last words, if not careful. Toby was for the most part in character here. The last comment he made, like I said, didn't feel needed, but I'm sure if I were him I wouldn't be able to resist either. I'll skip right over the music because no new character cues are apparent here other than what has already been composed, like James and Toby's themes. Classic all the same, just already heard. The camera work, however, I will point out for being hot off the press with some things. Pretty much every location is usual at this point, but it was nice to revisit some old spots, like James's first accident site, which hasn't had a train land there as of recently. Also, Gordon's Hillview. You know how I feel about that. Amazing! And that accident was pretty glorious, too. The speed the camera was flying at for the first-person point of view felt dangerously fast. But also notice one other thing. <gasps> That's right, it's not noticeable at first, but this crash occurred right next to the Good Luck siding. Now, if the crash was in the Good Luck siding, then I would have removed that title from it. But for anyone who might have been on that siding, they definitely would not have been hit by James. Which in this case is still good luck. Man, that really is a nice place to be. Next episode is off the rails. Thanks for watching.